What do you guys think of this sweater? It's kind of silly, right? I'm normally not one for these bright colors. And it's... <laughs> it's got matching pants. Brian says I look like a crayon. It's cold, okay? Leave me alone. Speaking of Brian, look what I got him for Christmas. It's me. And yes, it's backwards. Don't ask me why. You know, just to spice things up a little bit. What's good in the world if you don't have stupid pictures of yourself smeared all over the furniture? Not that a coffee mug is a piece of furniture. All right. Hi, everybody. If you're new here, my name's Erica. I'm a professional jazz and R&B vocalist and saxophone player. I live in New Orleans, which is a super musical city. Lots of artists, lots of people playing for a living. I know I don't seem like a professional. I swear I'm actually a really serious guy. And on this channel, I like to make really, really educational, nitpicky, nuancey, deep dives of your favorite performances. And today we're talking about Jen Hudson singing Vision of Love. Treated me kind, sweet destiny, carried me through desperation. We're having fun. And your girl's got a cover of this, so you better go watch it. Watch it right now. I watched it once, and it cured me of emphysema. My neighbor told me that, I swear. It's the best thing ever created, my cover of Vision of Love. Just kidding, my recent ones are definitely much better, but hey, you know. We had some good singing. But anyway, I'm excited to talk about this. I love this performance. And I love Jennifer Hudson. Would be so happy to do some more of her. She is a amazing, uh, I don't know how to work a computer, amazing vocalist. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> oh, we're like both kind of in reds. This is for you, MC. You treated me kind. Uh. Sweet destiny. Carried me through desperation. Okay, right off the bat. Oh, I got chills. So a couple things to take note of. She didn't just do the, um, the iconic, ha. Literally, what is it? I don't even know it. <laughs> you know, the iconic run that comes into the intro that many people do when they cover this song. Jen com did something completely different, which I love. You know, a lot of these pop stars, they do the same shit over and over again. And the other big thing to note is it is noticeably slower. The original is here. Treated me kind, sweet destiny. It's kind of a, I don't want to say medium tempo, but it's definitely not like this. To the one that was waiting for me. Well, Feel how much slower that is? It makes it a little, little groovier. I like it quite a lot, actually. Sweet destiny carried me through desperation. To the one that was waiting for me. Oh, she gives me chills every time. Notice how much darkness is in her voice. Mariah later in her career sang with a lot of oh, oh, high larynx and a really yeah, forward nasally kind of sound. Jen leaves the larynx low. She lets the voice come back a little. There's a lot more natural darkness to her sound. One that was waiting for me. It's like, it sounds a little exaggerated when I do it because my voice doesn't actually do that. Uh, you can hear there's a lot more richness in her color. And I love this moment right here. To the one that was waiting for me. To the one that was. Hear how short and clipped one was? Different than how Mariah usually articulates it, which is like. To the one that was. It was, wasn't that which is connected, right? She clipped the note, she made it short, and she left a lot of space. Waiting for me. Waiting for me. Hear how she dragged that out. She really held it over the beat. It wasn't one that was waiting for me, which is right in time. No, she stretched it a little bit. That's the beauty of doing something slower. You have more room to do stuff like that. Well, it took so long. Still, I believe. 
Oh, beautiful. And I noticed it took so long. That turn, she did it fast. Um, in many instances, in many records, and many performances of the song, people will do the turn a little laid back. It took so long. Here how that's slower and kind of behind the beat, whereas she sang it long. The turn was a lot faster. And I loved how she attacked it with a full chest voice. And after the turn, she put a little bit of air on it, right? It wasn't long, which is keeping the note in that chesty full place. And it also wasn't long, which is starting the note with air and starting it breathy. She started full, long, really dark, larynx back, larynx low, voice kind of back, long. Oh, and after the turn, she put some air on it, right? Beautiful choice, beautiful transition. So long. Still I believe uh. somehow the one that I knew would find me eventually. And right there, eventually, hear how short she makes it. Eventually. It's not eventually, which is all connected, all legato. No, she clips it, she articulates it, makes it really short, right? Add some bounciness. Hear how the groove, even though it's slower, there's a lot of subdivision. You hear a lot of rim shots in the drums that to make it, even though it's slow, it's got a lot of bounce to it. And the way she's singing it is really highlighting, highlighting that. I don't know. I feel like I just made a weird face. Yes, the moment we've all been waiting for. Listen to those iconic hits leading up to that chorus. It was all that you give into me. Ka, 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 ka. And then a break. I pray through the night. No. Then notice the vowel. It's not no, which is pure and tall. It's not. Ah, it's an I vowel, but it has a lot of ah in it. It's wide this way. And so powerful. She's really playing with her vowels here, and she's using them to emphasize the richness in her voice. Alienation. Hear how it wasn't alienation. Hear how that sounds different because that I kind of kept kind of the same vowel throughout the phrase. Um, it was kind of an uh with different degrees of of a uh, and e uh, and e. She's not doing that. She's giving us a really stark contrast between every single vowel that she chooses. So alienation. A, that is a lot of A with that diphthong on the end. Y'all know how I feel about that word. But a diphthong, don't ask me why it's called that. A, it's that E at the end of A. She really hangs on to that A, Lee, and then that E is really E. It's not E, which is a little more E, uh, right? <laughs> Alienation. And then uh, and she lowers the lyrics and makes it really rich. Lots of different colors within a phrase. A singer who gives you that is a singer that has a lot of control. A lot of control over their tone. A lot of control over their vowels. <laughs> And hear those O's. She kind of really O puts a W on it, which is a diphthong. As much as I hate to admit it, O, it's not A, which is just a tall A. You hear how she's really closing off that O with that W sound, making it really round and dense. Just some ways to add a little richness to the sound. What if I talk like that? Had to be uh. strong. I 
Yes, Queen. Had to be strong. You hear that really ha on the attack is so much H hat and notice how it's short. It's not had to be, which is a lot longer, a lot more connected it's had to be. Everything is shorted. Everything is clipped. I'm loving that. That's a different way to sing the song, right? I feel like when I sing this and if you listen to my version, I use a lot of legatos, a lot of um, smoothness and connectedness. Well, that's one way to approach it, but this is different. This is more rhythmic. This is really hitting that subdivision and using a lot of, space and a lot of articulation to make the notes groovy and then b the iconic everybody does this is to b hit that on a chest voice b and then you flip and notice when she sings in her head voice something kind of quintessential about her style is her vibrato is a little slower and wider it's not that b <laughs> like really, really fast and really narrow pop, modern R&B, vibrato. And I'm a fan of that. You know, think like Gabriel Enrique, Mariah sometimes. But hers is a little slower, a little wider. So it's a little more fluttery, kind of reminiscent of like old gospel music. Had to be. <laughs> Hear how that's a little slower, a little fluttery? This is soulful in its own sense, right? Strong. Strong. You hear how she fell off of that? Ong. Uh, uh, and she gave us an ah. Uh. And another way that she kind of, another big part of her sound, sa, is these ugly vowels. They're really edgy. Ah, she uses a lot of ah, ha. And then she lets the lyrics come up a little bit. Ha, it's not ha, which is a lot taller, a lot purer, right? Ha. It's a little back, a little, the tongue is kind of, the tongue in the larynx is kind of high. And then she puts some of that fluttery vibrato on it, right? Think like old gospel music. Take us to church, Jen. Take me any day. And now I know I succeeded in finding a place that could see uh. I had a vision of love. And it was more that should be. I'm loving, did you catch these hits? It even like slowed down just a little bit. But then about a big hit right there. And then, uh, and then we're kind of on the pre-chorus, right? These hits, this motion in the drums, that's a great way to signal a transition in the song. I have a vision of Get that horn line? That's not in the original. Love that. And I'm just really still loving this kind of feel really hitting that that backbeat. I also noticed all that you've given to me. It wasn't all all that you've given to me, which is how I, I tend to sing it. Not to like compare everybody to myself, but I'm just saying that there's so many different ways to approach a song. And in your little nuances and in your details, there's a lot of different choices that you can make that can paint a completely different sound. Oh, here, there, she's very tall, right? It's not oh, which has more ah uh, in it. It's oh, and it also doesn't have oh. Uh, Oh, which is yeah, which is nasal quality, right? Hers is a lot, a little bit farther back, chestier, not mixier, and darker and taller. Will you believe me if I look at you like this? But you hear the difference, right? Oh, that is incredible. Incredible arrangement. Don't make me turn my piano on. I don't even know if y'all can hear the piano because it doesn't come in through this piece of shit, but. Ka, 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 ka. Hear those fat hits? It's the bass drum. 
And it's also the horns. You hear that trumpet. It's blowing your head off. I live with a trumpet player. I know how freaking loud they can get. I have nightmares about that thing. Bum, 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 bum. And you notice that it slows down. You hear the change? The change in the tempo, it slows down quite a lot. Bum, 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 bum. Hear that? It slowed. And then right here, no more drums. Well, actually, yes, we're getting a suspended cymbal roll. You know, the big cymbal. He's going like this on it with both. You hear that? But there's no drum kit. Complete change in feel. And then these backup singers, these beautiful backup singers are giving us some pads or some whole notes. Ooh. Ooh. B flat major triad. A friendly chord. And I'm noticing it's quite, um, I think it's just in root position, meaning it's one, three, five. Sometimes people, sometimes people invert chords, meaning you stack the one, three, five, whatever. You stack them in different order than that. But this sounds to me like it's not. So much vibrato. I noticed she didn't do the iconic dream run, which I love that. You know, like do something different with it. Don't do the same runs every single time. A lot of vibrato in that phrase. And I visualize. I noticed she'll put vibrato like even on short notes. But notice again, it's not connected. It's not. And I visualize, which is all connecting the whole phrase, right? Still using that space, even though the feels changed a lot. And we're, we no longer have that. We, we lost that rhythmic, that like really subdivide, subdivided feel. However, she's still singing with that, which is brilliant. You know, it contrasts this transition that we're in. It really contrasts what the band is doing. Uh. Uh. Catch that big scoop. And she gave us a moment of straight tone on the front, right? It wasn't, love, which is vibrato on the whole thing. No, some straight tone on the front. And it's not just a scoop. Love that came to be it's not just that it's love it's kind of like a hill she goes up and then she comes down be i loved that right it's not just be it's be he 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 she gives us a he she re-articulates each note Remember what I was saying about these ugly vowels? Live! I don't really, that's not how I usually sing, so it's not going to sound great when I do it. But you hear what I'm talking about? Ah, really smiley this way, really poignant and in your face. It's not supposed to sound pretty. It's not supposed to be so alive or all pure and choir boy. No. Get a drum roll. I knew she was gonna do that. Me, I like could just hear it. And notice again the vibrato. Me, it's pretty wide, right? And pretty slow. It's not. Me. It ain't that. I love a fast vibrato, but sometimes it gets kind of being electrocuted. And then me was kind of a, a mixy chest voice. Me, head voice, he, vibrato. And then he, hear how she threw it up? Yeah, just like that. I made it real short. It's on me, which some people do, but no. Ugh, 
chills. Did you hear those big hits on the bass drum when she came back in? Bomb, bomb, bomb. As she was singing, Treat at me kind. Giving us those fat bass drum hits. Right there. I love the two. Hi. Hi. It's not just Kai. Not just one turn. She kind of goes up twice. This guy's killing. Oh, she's so powerful up there. So, uh, hear how her vowel, as the note goes up, it goes from so, uh, she puts more ah uh, in it, right? To really emphasize that poignant, that brightness, that in your face quality. I like this shot too. We can see the whole thing. Cute dress, girl. You can like see her whole body. You can see her legs. Oh, speaking of legs, I got a question for you. Buckle up. Why is it that when you're standing, these are your legs? But when I'm sitting... All of a sudden, this becomes my lap. Who the fuck came up with that? Sorry, I had like a fever dream recently. And I revisited this, oh, this like primal awareness of like, what the hell does that even mean? I've got this like childhood memory of literally being in preschool. I know it was preschool because I remember the classroom. And I remember the bitch who was teaching. And I remember her saying, fold your hands and put them in your lap. And I was like, my lap? These are my legs. And I've been thinking about it. And it's been driving me crazy. Who came up with that? Okay, I'm sorry. That was really irrelevant. I just don't get the English language. I feel like people are really... It's just quite a stretch if you ask me. Why are you trying to twist things around into something they're not as soon as I sit in a chair? All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. same shortness and the bite with which she's articulating hop with the one that I right it's not how when the one that I not that not connected short and staccato here's a jump who did the whistle did she do it All right, she gave us something different, and I loved that. You know, that is like such an iconic moment of the song, but that doesn't mean you gotta sing it that way. Is this thing plugged in? If this thing is not plugged in, we're gonna have a problem. I love that she really stretched out that straight tone, right? Ha! And again, ah, a lot of a bright vowel with a lot of ah, and it's not ha. Which some people would sing it that way. Ha! And she really let that note ring before she put vibrato on it on the end, giving us terminal vibrato, vibrato at the end. It's perfectly fitting. And then there's that break, ka, in the band. Silence, they break. They're, they're not playing through that. That is one of the most iconic spots. And I noticed, how? Oh! She finished it on an O. Oh. She closed the, she put some diphthong. She finished the vowel with an O, oh, right? It didn't say, ah. Oh. She didn't end it like that. And she really drags this ho oh, rather than the ho oh, whoa oh, oh. oh. So something fun about this song, I mean, there's many songs that feature this, but just something to think about is that this kind of uses a um a lot of minor pentatonic sound, right? I talk about the pentatonic scale a lot. One, two, three, five, six, eight, six, five, three, two, one. That's the major pentatonic scale. And that is what like all of pop music is based off of pretty much.
Ew, my piano is so dusty. Gross. That's what so many riffs and runs are based off of. And this uses that same pentatonic scale, but it's got, it's different. It's the minor pentatonic scale. Whoa. Hear how that's a different quality? It sounds darker, right? Then. Whoa. It sounds happy. That's major. No, this is darker. And so this run, straight down the minor pentatonics. Whoa. And it's right here, she lands on that flat three. And instead of doing the whole, whoa, 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 she gives, she just gives us a turn and lands on the one. Oh, whoa. It's different, but it's kind of the same. Once you know your scales, everything just kind of sounds the same, <laughs> which is why I'm always telling my students, hey, it's not for nothing. You got to practice those scales. They change your ear, they change your life. But I still love that she did something different. We love you. Aww. Turn out to be Notice how she's saying that turned out to turned was just a long straight tone, right? But then out had some of that vibrato and it's a little bit fast for Jen turned out to, but, and the two is a straight tone, but it was short. It wasn't turned out to hear how the, the clipping that note kind of gives it, it gives quite a different effect than if she were to stretch it long. And then I noticed on B, she just hung on that E for just a split second, and then she went to an A ah, ah, vowel, not an A, ah, an A ah, vowel. Ah. Ah. You hear there the vibrato gets really slow, right? Really wide, old gospel vibrato. To Hear those drums, and then here they give us those hits. I I just missed it. Here they give us these hits. Ready? And you hear how it slowed down, right? Uh, wow, amazing band, amazing band, amazing drummer, and amazing arrangement, too. I loved the, what they did with the bridge. I love the different transitions. I love that it was slower, and they slowed it down. They played it time with time quite a lot. And uh, Jen who always takes my breath away. She made it her own, which is so amazing to see in a pop performance. So many of these bitches get up here and sing the exact same thing. And hey, I'm not hating on them for that. I would do that too. You know, if I'm singing an iconic pop song and everybody want, knows it this certain way, there is some value to singing it how people recognize it. But she didn't do that. She completely made it her own. She Everything from the vowels, from the runs, from the timing, from the articulation, she, Jennifer sang it the way Jennifer wanted to sing it. She didn't copy Var Mariah. Mariah. Verizon Wireless. She absolutely made it her own, which is just so special. So, ugh. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. This is probably like my 14th version of Vision of Love. This is just such a great song. Let me know if you want to see more of her because I love her very much and I'd love to take some deeper dives on her amazing voice. And yeah, if you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe. Watch my version. For real. It could be educational, I swear. No, in all seriousness, because I did something very different than it, than this. And you can... See what you can pick out. See what you notice is different and how there are so many different choices that you can make to make a version completely, completely different. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more fun things. I love talking about music here. I love what we do. So keep practicing if you're a singer and if you're just a nerd like me, keep being a nerd. Love you. Mm -hmm.